Welcome to the Cross Knowledge Podcast. Here we discuss the trends, opportunities, and challenges of corporate digital learning. Let's meet today's host. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Cross Knowledge Podcast. I'm Renan, and I'll be your host today. The Human Advantage is a series of the Cross Knowledge Podcast where we explore the pivotal role of humans in driving organizational success. The idea is to hold candid conversations with business leaders and experts who have demonstrated a deep commitment to fostering a more human workplace. Today, we have the pleasure of welcoming Kim Hrubrecht, a learning and development specialist at Proximus. Throughout her career, Kim has been at the forefront of designing and implementing transformative training programs at Proximus. She realized the true impact of her work when a Proximus employee came up to her and said, thank you, you changed my life. For Kim, learning is not just about attending workshops or completing courses. It's about driving cultural changes within the company. In this episode, we'll be exploring how L&D shapes workplace interactions and the significance of fostering nonviolent communication in corporate environments. Kim, it's a great to have you with us in the show. Thank you very much for participating. Thank you so much for having me and also compliments on pronouncing my name correctly. <laughs> I know it's all for <laughs> non native speakers, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I worked hard for that. <laughs> yeah, you did, you did. Thanks for that. I'm really pleased to be here. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you on the show as well. So, Kim, uh, so in the preparation for this podcast, you shared a very touching story about an employee who approached you and said, thank you, you changed my life. Can you tell us more about it? Yeah, it's uh, definitely one of the highlights of my career. So I am um, a while back, you know, I was in charge of a program that we call Enlight, and it's a collaboration with London Business School for senior leaders. And then after the last wave of the program, um, I met one of the participants at the hallway. I was just waiting for the elevator, like like it goes, you know, in company life. And then she came up to me and she hugged me and she said, oh, thank you for changing my life. And I was like a little bit flabbergasted. And um, she then told me, you know, that she was part of the last track and it was really a game changer for her that she uh, really enjoyed all of the different sessions, you know, and it brought some um, uh, more knowledge to her, some different ideas. But then she had some coaching sessions as well. And then she she said, like, I grew exponentially. And I also, I dared to, to do, I make other moves, do different things and also believe in myself. You know, I, I, I realized like, oh, I, I can do different kind of things. And uh, it, it, uh, it helped her land a job in the executive committee. Um, so she was um, really happy. And I was like a little bit flabbergasted at the moment. And it was definitely one of the moments that I thought like, oh, this is why I do my job and also why I love it so much. You know, I'm, I'm really grateful that I can work for Proximus and that we have I, that learning is so important to the company that I get to build life changing programs. So, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, one of my proudest uh, moments of my career, I must say. Yeah. Yeah, I can totally understand. And I think that it's, it really touches on in that potential of like learning about like, as you just said, like you can really change lives through learning, through like education. And, and it's really great when you, when you see like the results, like in real, uh, in real lives, as you just mentioned. So con- first of all, congratulations <laughs> for your, for the work you have been doing. <laughs> okay. So you are a firm believer that L&D can drive uh, cultural change. And you mentioned that connecting communication or nonviolent communication is something that you're passionate about. Can you explain what connecting communication means to you and how it impacts company culture? Okay, I, I would love to do that. Um, maybe before I dive into that, I will maybe explain a little bit for the people who are not familiar with connecting communication, what it is about. So connecting communication, as the name suggests, is about, is about having conversations that build connection, of course. Um, it's possibly most n- known as nonviolent communication, as it is brought to us by Marshall Rosenberg. 
And it's about, for me, it's about communication with empathy, with understanding for your own needs and your own feelings, and then also, you know, the needs and the feelings of others. So it's really about having those two coming together, like your uh, your inner world and also the inner world of the other um, one. It has um, four different steps. So it's about observation, feelings, needs, and then also requests. So in the first step, you describe what you factually see, and then you try to have at least uh, amount of interpretations in it. Like, I just see this, like I see behind you, I see uh, um, orange and green, you know, for example, you know, this is factual. There's not a lot of observation about it. Um, and then in the second step, you 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 explain what it makes you feel like. I love orange, you know, orange makes me feel happy. I don't know. And in the third step, you say uh, what the, what the need is that um, lies beneath it. You may maybe orange that makes me think of fun, and I love fun in my life. It's a need that I that I I adore maybe. And then in the fourth step, you know, you you ask for a clear action that you would like to be taken. Like maybe I would say like I want I want more orange in my life. Can we can we have more orange? You know, and it's a, just a, a little crazy example you know to, to have you um guide you to the four uh, steps that are in uh, non-finance communication um what i like about it is that it helps you communicate about things that matter to you and that uh in that, all of that, you are also the one that is responsible for your own feeling and the actions that you need for it, you know, because um quite often we, we have little discussions in our life and they're never about the topic itself. Like, um, but it's, also, it's always about the need that is in that. Like, for example, I like have a home example, you know, maybe you have an argument about the dishwasher, you know, you come at, um, at, at night you're at home and you come you come home and you just and you see oh the dishwasher isn't loaded or isn't unloaded yet you know and then you you bicker a little bit with your partner and you say like oh why haven't you done it yet no 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 you know but it's not about the dish dishwasher it's it's about uh, your need maybe for cleanliness or maybe also because you just want to have some rest at the end of the day you know it's not about the dishwasher and it's the same in a business context let's say maybe you have a a weekly meeting and it annoys you because um, you're someone that, that really likes a lot of clarity and structure and, and maybe your need is met in that meeting because the person who's leading it you know is more like a go with the flow or uh, maybe a little bit chaotic you know and then there are different ways that you can react to that situation you can say something like um, um, I I, uh, I really don't like these meetings because uh, um, we we never get anywhere. Or you you, you know you can get angry, um, but it's also something you can just voice. Like maybe you can go in the meeting and if you like follow a little bit of the the uh, the, the four steps that I just um, explained earlier, you could say something like. Um, Hi, we're now 30, meet, 30 minutes in the meeting and we haven't made any decisions on the topic yet. Um, I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed with all of the work that still needs to be done. And I actually would like some more clarity of what is expected right now. Could we maybe stop this meeting and we start next week with a clear agenda and also expected outcome? You know, which is a, a, a different way of voicing your needs, um, you know, taking full knowledge like this is what I need and eh? these are my needs, this is what I'm feeling. And then having a clear request for the other uh, to the other person, you know, which makes that you can have better collaboration and, and, and you know, be better understood by others as well. Um and that is something that I, that I really like. And it's the same like um, um, if you have um, feedback um, that you maybe would not have expected, like maybe say in, in the meeting, like I'm the meeting owner and, and the other person says something like, we never make any progress in this meeting. You know, there are several things I can do. I can get annoyed. I can think, well, you know, we're working so hard. What is wrong with you? We are at, can you not, can you not be constructive or maybe come up with some ideas? You know, I can, I can be very angry and, and, and I can yeah. feel offended or I can think like, hmm, okay. So maybe you need something else. And I could just simply say like, okay, please elaborate. Um, what would you need to feel like this meeting is progressing? 
or I could do an educated guess and I could say, hmm, okay, I understand. Like, do you do you need more clarity or structure or what is it that you need? And then the other person, you know, you know can, can react. And I think you can feel uh, right away that it feels completely different if, if you re respond in another way. It really builds connection and helps to seem, be more clear and to feel understood and connected by your colleagues. Um, and I think this is one of the things that to to come back to your question, of course, like uh, that I think that yeah. is is really a game changer, and is also one of the things that um, will help um, change culture. Because um, as for a company culture, we call it a think possible mindset. Like everything is possible. Think out of the box. There's so many things that we can do. And then um, we have like four different principles. It's about I care. I radically simplify, like making things really simple, which is not easy. Um, I make a difference. Yeah. And also, like, I embrace the future because, you know, we're in telecommunications. Things are moving so fast. So uh, uh, these are the, the four True. different principles. Um, quite obviously, um, connecting conversation is related to the I care part. Although it can also be a leverage for all other principles, you know, and you can simplify um, and make a difference, embrace the future, you know, if you if you communicate in a different way. Um, how we see it with Approximus is like we, we see this um, connecting communication that is like an extra toolkit for all of our team leaders, um, hierarchical and non-hierarchical, because we have agile um, team leaders as well, to have really meaningful conversations, because we believe that if you can communicate in a connecting way, first of all, people will feel uh, more connected, but also, you know, better understood, like, oh, okay, my manager gets that I need more structure. And, you know, it, it really opens up conversation. So in turn, we believe it's like it will increase clarity, trust within teams, which is really a very important for us. Like psychological safety is really important to us. Um, collaboration and, of course, efficiency, because, you know, if you understand each other well, you can work better together. So and in, in, in turn, I think sure. if I would say like all together, it's I think about increasing well-being in the company, something like that. So. I don't know if that answers your question, you know, it ties it a little bit all together. Yeah, but it's really great, like the way you said it, because actually it's all about, for example, if you can communicate better, of course, you're going to be able to collaborate better. You're going to feel better. You're going to, I mean, you're going to voice your needs. You get like to be understood by your colleagues and as well, like you get a better understanding of your, of your colleagues and like the impact on the company culture is, it's kind of like automatic. It's, it's kind of like, Okay, so it's going to improve like as, as just it's going to improve the workplace interactions within the company, and like the, all the things like well-being, employee engagement. It's just it's it's some sort of like a ripple effect that is going to improving mm -hmm. things as uh, as it goes as it reverberates it, as it reverberates across the company. So th that's very very interesting. So you just touched on that uh, what you have been doing at Proxima's uh, about connecting communication, but can you just can you share with us? how your L&D team at Proximus is reinforcing connecting communication within the, the, within the company. Yeah, I would love to. Um, maybe to give you a little bit of an idea of the challenges of our L&D team, maybe I can start with that. So we kind of have a lot of large programs, you know, that are bigger than the leadership booster about connecting communication. So as I said, like we're a tech company, so things are really moving really fast right now. Of course, in the world of AI, everything is moving quite fast. So we have um, a lot of team members right now, or we have some team members that are working on employability, you know, focusing on upskilling, reskilling. Um, we have a lot of learning programs, you know, like young graduate pro programs, uh, very large catalog offer to support all employees in their growth. And then we have, like I said before, like we have the agile way of working and the non-agile way of working. So that is definitely also one of the challenges we are facing today. And if you like, look at the bigger um, leadership um, um, parts eh, of our L&D team, I would say like um, the um, leadership booster that we're having right now is like a part of it. So we have different kind of programs like targeted on, I would say, like the knowledge or experience level of the employee. So we have like engage for starting leaders um, and then we have empower for more experienced leaders. And then we have the enlight, as I mentioned earlier, and then the where 
where I, the, the life changing program for me. <laughs> and then the, the yeah. senior, um, <laughs> the senior that is really for senior leaders only. And then, you know, where the leadership booster comes in, that is like a program that it targets all leaders. So we have more than a thousand hundred leaders, hierarchical and non hierarchical in within the company. Um, and the, the booster is really to um, help them connect, also connect, you know, as leaders together and, you know, and to support them in their yep. growth. So um, for, for that program, so together with my colleagues, Elina and Ali, we, we have built this program with us, the Leadership Booster. Um, and it's um, it's really a, a blended track. So what we try to do is, you know, our, our leaders are um, so busy. You know, I think everybody everybody's busy, but I think certainly our leaders, you know, there's so many things that they're um, coming at them. So also within the company, you know, things are changing so fast. So they're really, um, um, I would say loaded is maybe a little bit um, harsh, but, you know, they have a lot of things to do. So what we said is like, okay, we want to have like a, a blended learning track that is short in timing, but has like a lot of impact for them. Like um, just a couple of hours, yeah. learn some new skills, you know, that can really help them. Um, so um, we opted for like small learning sessions of only two hours. So what we did in March, we had our kickoff sessions and that was like more of an inspiration session. It was like a theater style. Um, they were like in, in a big atrium. So they were all together. Like, you know, it's like a, maybe a little theater show. And it was really to, to have um, to help people grasp, grasp the basic concepts of connecting communication. And there were like a little bit of sketches or a little bit of theory. And it was more like like a realization like oh these are things i definitely say and yes i could probably say them better you know i think like when people left the yeah. room they were like okay maybe i need some connecting communication in my life <laughs> uh, that was kind of the idea of the kickoff and then the second part was like a two-hour workshop and it was really about um um Help them, helping them in a, in a topic that they would choose. So we had four different topics. So we have conflict, workload and well-being, feedback and decision making. So what we did uh, before we started is it was like we we wanted to really help um, our all of our team leaders to like tackle some difficulties they were having in their job. So what I um, and, and my colleagues and we did, we talked with a lot of people and we said like, if you would say like, there's something I want to change today, what would that be? You know, and then we had like this fear of four different um, topics, you know, that we decided on. And then within those topics, we built about 25 cases and you know, 25 cases that people talked about that they had, had some difficulties with like, um, maybe they had like conflict, they had people within the team, you know, that were not agreeing with each other and they were conflicting about it and it had a, uh, an impact on the team. You know, that, that was one of the cases. And then maybe workload and well-being. You have a, a, a team member, you know, that is really driven and is really working so hard. But you think like, oh, maybe you're working a little bit too hard. You know, I don't want to get that. I don't want to get to the point that you go to a burnout, you know, but I also don't want to demotivate you. So, you know, things like that, are all kinds of um, cases that we knew that um, are, um, are uh, uh, team leaders were struggling with. So we built those 25 cases and then they went to the workshop and they had like 30 minutes of theory. So really like, okay, what is the, the four steps? Like I said, like, okay, how does that work? And um, how do yeah. you um, put that into a sentence and into uh, a conversation? How do you do that? And then they um, had like um, some practicing for an hour and a half. Um, because we wanted to make it as practical as possible and as short as possible. So after the, uh, these sessions right now, so we ended those actually like last week. So we uh, all of the leaders had those oh. sessions. And now the idea is that they start practicing within their teams. So first they had some cases and now uh, they, with um, the, the same template and, and the same structure, you know, they go to the team and if they uh, identify like this is one of the things that is difficult in my team or like with one or two people or maybe the whole team, 
And then they start having those conversations for the first time. And then we, they conduct like a small experience, uh, ex, um, experiments, I want to say, um, for, uh, during the yeah. summer, you know, or, uh, until this fall. And then, um, we ask them to do at least two exercises, you know, to get a little bit of a feeling and how this goes. The more the merrier, but at least two. And then, um, at yeah. the end of this, of this year, so starting from September to December, we have like sharing labs and then the team leaders come together and they really exchange experiences, their struggles, you know, what is working well, um, their best practices, like this, this went really good. And then, you know, this, uh, this is something like maybe, uh, you know, you give some feedback and then the other person totally does not um, react like you would if I expected them, you, you know. Sometimes we do something with the best intentions and we really try to make our get our message yeah. across and we talk about our feelings and our needs and the other person says like, what the hell did you just say? <laughs> you know, and then they, they get angry. <laughs> so, of course, yeah. you know, it can happen. And then the idea is, you know, they exchange and they can really um, learn from each other. And of course, you know, those, those sessions are well guided. So the coaches that are there, you know, will also help them, you know, with, with all, all kinds of um, things that they need. So... This is the mandatory part of the program, um, but we also have uh, some several other parts for the people who want to go deeper. So we have a full day training session yeah. in connecting conversations. So if you say like I I I I want to do better and I and I want to grow, you know, in this part, like I could need it, you know, it's a, it's a full day, you know, and yeah. it's a more of a total experience. And then from this fall on, we also have open sessions for all employees. And it was actually one of the big questions, like, um, we, you know, we, we planned this from the beginning that we would open it for all employees. But we had a lot of team leaders asking us, like, oh, I really want to do something with that. Um, and can my team members follow it too? Or can we have team sessions? So this uh, was okay. something, you know, that... Um, that we really wanted to do because we, we think it, this will also have like a, a big impact on the organization. Sure, sure. And it's interesting because you started with the team leaders, like with all the leaders, if I understood correctly, and then you expanded that to the whole, to the, to the employees and the team members. And it was very interesting that one of the team leaders recommended that training to their, to their teams because then, I mean, first, like it means that the, they really appreciate the training, but it also means that this idea of non, uh, the commu connecting communication is really expanding through, uh, throughout the organization, right? Yeah, yeah. And I actually, it was not, not just one team leader and we actually have team leaders and I'm, I'm actually so excited for that, that, that really said like, um, I really want to do this with my team. If you ever do a pilot, can we be please part of the pilot, you oh. know? <laughs> so, and actually that was something that we didn't think about. So we didn't think like, okay, let's have team sessions, but this fall we will have a pilot yeah. for team sessions, you know, because yeah, you, I, 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 you know, I love it that they really want to, to work with that. And we have some uh, team members. And actually we have, we had quite uh, some reactions about that. So, so um, I'm really pleased that they, you know, there was a request and of course that we can answer on it. Yeah. Yeah. It really is very rewarding uh, as you just observed, like in the very beginning of the podcast as well. So congratulations again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. You know, not everything goes well, of course. You know, we had little hiccups along the way, of course, you know, and we, we had sure. some, some sessions within Zoom. We had some sessions uh, that were live, you know, and then some technical difficulties. And, you know, we, uh, of course, we had some hiccups along the way. But globally speaking, I would say, like, I'm, I'm quite pleased with, uh, with how the, the sessions turn out. Yeah. Yeah, great, great, great. And what kind of results have you observed so far with all this work around uh, connecting communication? Well, of course, like I said, like right now we are like in between of the workshop and the sharing lab. So a lot of yeah. people are experimenting in their teams. Um, so I think I, I, I really look forward to the sharing labs because I think that um, most of the afterwards we, we will have um, a little bit more of an idea of what the real impact is. So, but today I, I will, I will say like, I like the buzz it's creating, you know, um, I sometimes hear people yeah. referring to the jackal and the giraffe, like, which are like basic concepts within connecting communications. And then, you know, I was talking with, with, a, with another, um, 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 colleague, you know, from a different department. And, um, and then she, she told me like, oh, I followed the training and I really liked it. And she said, you know what? I 
I was sending an email to my manager and then afterwards I reread it and I thought like, oh, I did the connecting conversation part because, you know, she put in like that, you know, I saw this and this and I'm feeling this and, you know, my needs are this and can we maybe do that? And she said like, all of a sudden, you know, I just read it, reread it and I was like, oh, I did it automatically. So I was like, thinking, yay. <laughs> so, um and uh, actually, you know, uh, because we had this little LinkedIn post, so a lot of people saw my face. So that means yeah. that people, like, if they saw me in, in uh, standing in the elevator or, you know, standing in line for lunch, that sometimes people came to me and they said, like, I really liked the session. It was really, really good. Um, it was very, really, very really hands-on. So I think, uh, um, and also because people have asked for team sessions, so I think we have a little bit of buzz within the organization. Um so a lot of enthusiasm, um, for sure. Uh, I think what I also noticed, like, is that the, uh, the the sessions get excellent ratings, and that the most persistent negative comments is that this workshop is too short. So I think that is something that oh. I that, like. That's quite <laughs> good, you know. Um, so I'm really looking forward, you know, to, to, to see more this fall and to see, like, have to more of a structural view of what the return and investment is. But, um, I really feel like things are, are moving quite fastly. And I think, you know, what we also saw is that, um, we opened up the session for this fall. Um, and so we have the, the sessions for um, uh, the team leaders and they're filling up quite nicely. But for the all employee yeah. sessions, you know, I think before we even communicated that they were online. So you were telling people in the workshops, you know, they're online and then we didn't get an official communication like on, on WAP, which is like our intranet. And um, even before that, like, half of the places were already filled. So we, we thought like, oh, okay, people are really enthusiastic to do this. So we opened up more yeah. sessions to make sure that we can accommodate the need. So um, it's a little bit too soon to say um, that we yeah. are really having a really big impact eh? and to really see like what is changing also on a cultural uh, level. But I would say that for now, we see there's a lot of enthusiasm, there's, there's buzz and people are talking about it and experimenting with it. And I think, you know, if we only started in, in March in, until now, I think that's about the best thing that I could possibly want at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's really amazing because actually here we're really talking about uh, L and D's potential in driving behavioral and consequently cultural changes, uh, and it's really amazing because actually if you're if you really get people talking about it, so you're really you're really seeing like that change happening. Like that change is like happening like before your eyes and see like, well, people are talking about it. People are writing emails differently. And so, and this is, this is behavioral change. So this is already like a, already a great result. And if you launch the program in March and you're already seeing all this enthusiasm uh, now in, in July, so that's a very short time. And, and seriously, it's a very, very big impact. I mean, I see it that way. I see that this is like has a huge impact. So congratulations again on your, on your award. Thanks. It's, no, it's really amazing. Yeah, you know, for, from March until now, we had so many learning hours. You know, if, if you, I think if you account everything yeah. together, we have we have like over seventy sessions. You know, and this fall we have we will have this again. So you know, it's it's actually it's quite big. It's not it's a yeah. So uh, it's a short time frame, but you know, we we. Overall, we touched like a thousand leaders. You can never reach anyone, of course, everyone, of course. But I think we reached right. like thousand of the thousand hundred leaders. So I think we are really, really happy with that. Yeah. Okay. Well, congratulations again to you and your team. So, uh, so as I said before, we're really talking about uh, L and D's potential in driving behavioral change and consequently cultural change, like corporate culture and and etc. So. Just to, to, to wrap up this episode, what advice would you give to L&D professionals aiming to drive cultural changes in their organizations, much like the work you're doing at Proximus through connecting communication? Yeah, um, I, of course, thought about that. And, you know, if, if I look at what we are doing right now, you know, like the Leadership Booster is, of course, like only one of the programs, you know, we, we run to reinforce our culture. Um, so it's it's a lever, that's for sure, but it's part of a bigger picture. And what I think is like the strength is what, what we are doing today 
is that we try our very, very best to capture the real needs of the organization. Like um, for the cultural program, like I said, we had those four pillars, right? And then um, to to come to those four pillars, we had like tinkatons, and it's like mm, something like a hackathon, you know, but spe- specifically yeah. um, aimed, you know, to understand what our employees thought of our culture and what we actually needed to to get where we want to be with our strategy, of course. Yeah. So that we had like conversations conversations with more than a thousand employees and then and eventually this led to the to the four principles and then for the leadership booster we we did something similar so like i said we had those 25 cases and to get to those 25 cases we had many conversations with team leaders coaches uh, business representatives um we wrote them we uh, we wrote them, rewrote them, got them checked, rewrote them again, got them checked again, rewrote them again. You know, it, it took a lot of time, much more than I actually anticipated that it would take. It was so much work, but I think it was definitely worth it because it was a big part of the success of the program. You know, um, we we followed all of the different trainings in the beginning to see where we still needed to adjust. So I I, I saw. Um, team leaders picking the cases out um, um, self-handed, you know, and I, I I was there and sometimes I saw people like say like, oh my God, this is something that I'm having in my team right now. And then I, I saw other people's like, hmm, I want to do this case, but I also have like this case, you know, and I, I it was sometimes difficult, you know, to, to, um, to select one. So, and I think for me, uh, that was one of the biggest successes of the program because we, we had identified the real challenges people had in their daily work. And then that is why people are highly motivated to tackle them. You know, they're like, I have this in my team. I don't want this in my team. You know, I want a solution. And then we say like, hey, if you communicate differently, here is a solution. And that is actually, you know, what we uh, what we tried to, um, to do with it. So um, my advice would be whatever your uh, challenge is today or what program you're trying to build is to really identify the needs of your population, really try to get to the struggle they are feeling and then have a training that really helps them resolve that. Um, I think the moment they um, experience the relevance, then you've sold the training. And, um, yeah. and then the second part is, you know, build a training that fits in their schedule. Uh, you know, I, one of the biggest challenges was to have like two hour sessions, which are so short, you know, and to, to, to make sure that you can have any kind of impact with that. So uh, for us, that meant like working with those very short time frame. And I think it was a very huge challenge, but it helped us reach the majority of our of our population and the people that really want to go further with it you know then they can take up a, a one day out of their time but at least we touched everyone and i think you know for me so that would if if i would um not that i feel like i have so much to say about it but if i could give you um some some advice i would say like first of all identify the needs and otherwise make sure you know that it fits in their time frame whatever that may look like without any constraints like two hours is not enough you know to have an impact i can assure you that even in two hours you can have a very mm-hmm. big impact yeah yeah and also because actually call it, it takes i mean it's just like bit by bit you know like it's just like one layer like after the other it's just like bit by bit and this is like how you really lead this is how it leads to that bigger impact that we were just talking about and, and I think like this is really interesting, the, the advice of understanding the needs, because actually sometimes, uh, it, even though it seems a little bit odd, we're still seeing some L, we're still seeing some L&D programs starting without like a clear goal or without a clear understanding of those uh, of the needs of the people that uh, we're going to be addressing. And this is I mean, this is some sort of like, well, how are we going to be lead, how it's going to be lead to that impact if you don't have the basic understanding of the needs. I know it takes time to understand the needs. As I just mentioned, you interviewed a thousand team leaders. So it takes time. <laughs> but now when you when you get to, through that, like the results just, you know, speak for itself. Like just the employee, uh, the person telling you, oh, I applied that when I wrote the email. So this is like the, the big, the impact. And this is how L&D can really drive uh, cultural change here. So yeah, that's, that sounds really amazing, the story you just shared. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for giving me the platform to share it. I'm really 
enthusiastic about it. And I really believe, you know, uh, not just for us, but that connecting conversations, nonviolent communication can really um, change companies and also like the world for the better. You know, if we better voice our needs and we are better in touch with our own needs, then I think only good can come out of that. So I'm really happy that with Proximus, you know, we go in that course and then we can already see the first like steps and, and seeing it, seeing it happen really makes me very uh, enthusiastic and also a little bit proud maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Kim, it was a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you very much for sharing your story. And um, yeah, and all, all the good luck to you like in the next steps. Okay, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. We hope to see you again for the next episode of the Cross Knowledge Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends and colleagues.